Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, we are visiting the Dollar Tree and the Target Dollar Spot and collabing with some fall DIYs. Let's go ahead and get started. So I went to my local Dollar Tree and to the Target Dollar Spot over these past couple weeks and collected a few items that I wanted to now share with you a few simple DIYs that you can do to help decorate for fall. We're gonna start out with these little ceramic pumpkins and this really cute ceramic owl that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna show you three different ways to do very simple, easy um, paint and like distresses on them that will completely take them to the next level without having to put in a ton of effort, especially if you need a quick turnaround. We're gonna start with the first and that is with the owl and we're gonna be painting it with a moss colored um, from the Waverly chalk paint. It's a really pretty green and I think it fits in really well with the fall vibe and I'm just going to do a good solid coat all over the entire owl. For this I'm just kind of making sure I get in all of those grooves. Um, take your time. This is like I said you're just painting it nothing too crazy and then we're gonna let it dry. We're going to just distress it back. This owl has so many beautiful details on it and we want to make those pop. So you can do this with a wet rag, a wet paper towel, or a baby wipe. Um, I like to use baby wipes. I started out with a wet paper towel, but I didn't have it wet enough so it wasn't working quite well. So I just grabbed a baby wipe next to me and started to just lightly rub all over this owl until the surfaces that are raised start to distress away. That's what's gonna kind of make it pop. It's gonna go back down to that original color of that white. Um, if it does get too wet, you can wipe it with a dry paper towel to kind of get any of that paint that's kind of just sliding around instead of coming off. And then after that, you wanna seal it, especially if you use a chalk paint. Um, if you didn't, then you might not have to worry about this step, but the chalk paint definitely works best for this technique. And I'm just gonna seal it with some clear Waverly wax. You can use a clear spray paint or if you only have like Mod Podge on hand or something, any of that would work. But I'm gonna use the clear wax. All you do is basically paint it on and then lightly wipe it all off, any of the excess, and then you are done. That's the first look. I think he's super cute. I haven't seen these owls there before. I know they've had some different ones in the past, but I absolutely love this one and think he was a very easy, cute touch. The next I picked up two of these ceramic pumpkins. They do have some cute pumpkin leaves on there and detailed stem. So we're going to paint them up with some colors. I'm gonna use that same green moss from Waverly. I'm going to use some white chalk paint that I mix in. I think it's called, um, Spiced Carrot and acrylic paint, Spiced spice Carrot. I'm just gonna mix that in and add a, just a little bit of red to get the color that I want. The reason I'm doing this is because the chalk paint's gonna adhere to the ceramic really well. So I wanna make sure I keep that texture. So I'm just mixing up my own color for the actual pumpkin and then I'm gonna be using the color, I believe, Truffle from Waverly as well, again, in a chalk paint. So I'm just gonna work on painting both of these pumpkins up and I'm gonna show you how you can get two different looks depending on what you're going for. Once these are nice and dry, I'm going to just be using some more wax. Um, I'm using the Waverly. You can use any of the waxes that they have, and this works just fine. And I'm going to show you a way to get more of a lighter um, light tone for a pumpkin or like a darker, more, I don't know, fall, cozy, spooky type of thing um, if that's what you're going for. Now, you can honestly put your wax on, on in any color that you want. You can easily take the clear wax that you have and tint it with any color acrylic paint that you have because that makes your options endless. Instead of having to go buy waxes in a specific color, that's what I like to do. I just like to buy the, this big container of clear wax and you can use other brands, that's fine. And then I just pour it however much I need out, use acrylic paint to lightly tint it. Um, just make sure that you always have more wax than you do paint. And you're able to do this same process with any color that you need. Um, I like to do this when I want a bright white wax because the Waverly white wax is more of a cream color. So that's how I use it the most, but I just want you to know that that is an option. I do happen to have the two colors that I need in the actual um, bottles that they came in that I did not pre-mix and that's what I'm gonna use. For the first one, I'm using the Waverly White Wax. Again, it comes in more of like a creamy color and that's kind of what I'm going for with this one the same process. You're going to just paint it all on 
and then you're going to take a paper towel and you can either dab or wipe off the excess. I kind of like to do both depending because if you wipe too hard, you might take some of that paint off from underneath depending on how long you've let it sit. Um, the longer you let it sit, so I like to do this before it fully dries, but if you want more of the wax to stay on in a heavy wax look, just let your wax dry a little bit longer and less will come off whenever you wipe. So again, I like to dab and wipe and I just get it down to how I want it to look. Now this is kind of a reverse process. You're going to get all of that wax down into those grooves and it's going to stay there and then as you wipe those raised surfaces, the wax will come off of those parts. So that's where more of the color will pop through and the details are going to pop from the wax being in the crevices. Whereas with the last one, you know, we put the paint in the crevices and then wiped the paint away from the raised surfaces. So that's all you're going to do with this. Set it aside, let it dry. Just be careful with fingerprints. If you have to pick it up and move it while the wax is wet, just use that paper towel that you were using to wipe it off um, and hold it. That way you don't leave your fingerprints in it because when the wax is wet, your fingerprints will show up. For the second one, I'm going to use the Waverly Antiquing Wax. I always like to have mine watered down because it's really thick and I don't like how heavy it goes on. This just allows me to spread it better but also control how dark it gets. So I already have some pre-mixed here. I keep this little bottle with pre-mixed with water and then I have um, a bigger bottle with it full force just so I can change it up depending on the project. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just gonna paint it on this pumpkin and get it all in those crevices and grooves and then wipe it back off to down to where, you know, to the amount that I like and what is best for, for my what I'm going for. And so that's all you need to do. And it's really cool to see the differences of what color wax you put on and how it can change two things that were identical at the beginning so whether you're going for this you know lighter um you know not as dark and spooky kind of vibe for your fall decor or if you like this darker like i said kind of cozy um look which i think is my preferred uh this is just a way that you can achieve it by doing the same thing so if you're just sitting down to knock a few projects out you can get a couple different looks you know within the same process so let me know down below which technique is your favorite out of these three and which of these pieces is your favorite. Out of the two pumpkins, I would say definitely the darker one is my favorite, but overall the owl is the winner. I just think he's super cute and such a hoot. I'm sorry for that. Okay, moving on. The next project that I'm going to do, um, I picked up these two glass pumpkin jars from the Target dollar spot. They're very cute, they have a, the cork tops. They're not super big, but you can literally put whatever you want in these to kind of give it a cute decor. So I'm gonna do one more of that like darker spooky and I'm gonna do one more just like a fall, you know, cozy vibe. I am doing the first one with these skeletons that I picked up at Dollar Tree a couple years back actually. Um, I had several packs of them, used them for a haunted house I was doing and they have just been sitting in my closet since then. So I figured maybe it's time to use them. And I'm sorry Mr. Skeletons, but I am going to cut them down with my wire clippers and just get them into all of the pieces that I want. And I'm just gonna fill the jar with all the little parts and put the cork lid back in. I'm going to take some of the wire jute from the Dollar Tree, which I will say I've used this many times in the past and the quality of it this time around is not my favorite. It's thicker than it has been in the past and it just was not holding together very well. Um, I've always had to kind of super glue the ends where you cut them so they don't fray and un unwind, but this time it was way worse than before. So I might have to look at alternatives of where I get my wire jute because this is just not the vibe for me. It was very frustrating. And like I said, a little thicker than I would want, but you can use twine, you can use anything. And I'm just gonna wrap this around the jar, the lip, like the lip of the jar to where the cork meets and kind of twist it, hot glue it in place. And then I'm gonna use this little skeleton hand that I have from you know projects in the past. And I'm going to hot glue that on right in the middle. I'm gonna use a paint marker or a pencil. You can use your pinky, whatever you want. Um, and I'm going to wrap the wire jute around and it's gonna give them the fun little curls and they'll stay in place because it is wired. Now just keep in mind the thicker you know, marker or whatever it is you're using, the, the bigger the loops. So if you wanted small, more coily loops, just use something smaller to wrap it around. And that is it for the first jar. I think it's super cute. I love all of the little pieces in there. And again, I apologize to the little skeletons, but I think it turned out really well. 
The next one, I'm just going to use some of these like berry branches that I've had for a while that I haven't really put to good use. I'm just going to cut them down and slide those in the jar, put the lid on and do the same thing with that twine. Um, same process as before, wrap it around, hot glue it in place, make the coils. And then this time I'm going to add a little sprig of that berry, um, that little berry twine. I apologize. I'm, I don't know names of florals or berries or anything like that, but I like how simple I like the neutral color palette and I think it turned out really really cute. This is what I did. Like I said you can put anything. Dollar Tree has those cute little wooden acorns. Um, all kind of little miniatures that you could just drop into these. Perfect to set up on a shelf on a tiered tray or anything like that. The perfect little shelf sitters. Um, you could even you know do some tinted um, paint or tinted glass on them. I think that would be super adorable. Um, the possibilities are endless, and I believe these were $3 for a pack of two. Love them. So let me know in the comments below what would you try or what would you do with these little um, pumpkin glasses. Again, I got these from the Dollar Tree Target Spot. I can't do this. Again, I got these from the Target Dollar Spot. For the next project, we're going to make a cute little fall garland. I picked up um, two different types of burlap leaves from the Dollar Tree, just a brown burlap maple leaf and then a um, orange burlap leaf. I don't know what kind of leaf this is, but I picked up those. I have a bunch of ribbon already in my stash from Dollar Tree and other places for whenever it goes on sale. I like to pick them up. That way I have it whenever I need it. I'm also going to be using um, just some jute from the Dollar Tree. It's just like the the brown jute that they have there and I'm going to use that for my string. I just kind of went, I do have a fireplace in my house so I kind of went and just strung it out to see how long I wanted it to be to fit my space. If you aren't sure, I feel like a good measurement would be like whatever your wingspan is. I'm short though so maybe don't I don't know. It works for me. Um, and maybe just make that a little bit longer because you could always cut the sides down to fit, but what you don't want to do is make it too short to where it doesn't fit your area. And then I just folded that string in half, found my center point and laid it down. That way I could start in the middle to make sure everything is even on the way out. And again, that way I have extra string on both sides that you can tie off and tuck away or cut down after you figure out which space you need it in. So I'm going to start with one of the brown maple leaves and I'm just going to find a good spot. I'm not going to do it at the tip. I just pulled that little wire backing off and I'm going to do it kind of about an inch down. That way I don't have to worry about the leaf trying to spin or flip up on me. So I'm just going to do one thing of glue. Be mindful that it is burlap so the glue can go through the front. So I'm trying not to use an excess amount. Um, I just put the twine back down over it. I'm using my little silicone finger that you can also get from the Dollar Tree to push that twine into it. That way it was adhered. And then I immediately pick it up off the table so that if any glue went through the front, it is not going to get glued down to my table. From there, I'm going to be making some little ribbon pieces and I'm using, um, I know that this, the fall ribbon came from the Dollar Tree and then I think the green burlap one did too, but I, I'm, I'm not positive. And I'm just going to cut those down to the sizes that I need. So I just kind of got the length that I wanted. And then once I cut all of them out that I, that I needed, I went ahead and cut off the wired sides because I want this to be more like a um, whimsical fabric <laughs> ribbon rather than one that kind of stays in place and holds shape. So I just cut off those edges and I believe, let me count how many I used. I used one, two, three, four of the green. So that means I used eight of the fall. So what I wanted to do is just tie these in between each leaf. So on either side of that center maple leaf, I'm going to do two of the wor fall worded ribbons and one of the green in between. And I'm just going to tie those on to where I think they look good and then go on to my next leaf. Now I will say, I don't really know how to explain this in the video, but if you're doing this, you'll kind of understand what's happening. If you tie it a certain way, it'll angle a certain way. So if you don't tie the next one the same way, they kind of like are going wonky kind of, but you just retie it and you'll be okay. And I don't know how to explain it. Um, I'm pretty sure like if the string is laying on the table, if you put the ribbon underneath and then tie it and make sure you're putting, you know, say the right side over the left and then tying down, 
and you just however you're tying it make sure you're doing it the same way with each one and you won't have that problem it's pretty easy in the moment to say oh that's not working and then redo it but my brain right now looking back doesn't really know how to explain that to you and I apologize but you'll kind of just see it and feel it when you're doing it after the ribbons next is just that um, orange burlap leaf again I did kind of like an inch down put that line pushed it on and it's that simple I just repeated that process I did um, just those two orange ones and then another round of ribbon and then the two burlap leaves at the end to close it off and it's such a quick and easy way to make a super cute garland that can go across you know a table a fireplace a, a door entry a wall you know whatever you're kind of setting up and like I said quick easy cheap we like all of those things so let me know what you would put on yours. What colors would you use? Uh, again, I just kind of went with these leaves. I thought they were super cute. Lots of pops of color within it and also kind of neutral at the same time. So I really like that. It screams fall to me. So let me know in the comments below if you like this DIY and what ribbons and colors would you choose? Next, we're going to be making a door hanger slash um, porch sign. So believe it or not, I got this sign at the Target dollar spot. It was $5. This thing stands about three and a half feet tall and it has a hanger in case you, if you don't want to lean it, you can hang it up. That is wonderful. Now I will say it seems like that MDF board stuff. So you do want to be mindful that that's not really made for outdoors. So what we're going to do is we're going to take three of these little wooden leaves that we picked up from the Dollar Tree and I also grabbed an acorn. Now, if you're not able to find this sign or one like it or a piece of scrap wood that you have laying around, that's okay. You can still do this exact same project, but you can just use a piece of twine to connect everything. Um, so don't think that if you don't have a board, that's okay. You can still move forward with this. I'm going to start by painting the three leaves and the acorn. I'm just going to pick out the different colors that I have. I am using acrylic paint for this. Um, no, nothing special. I just have a lot more color options with my acrylic paints. So I'm just going to start by painting either each of them a base color um, and then using colors that kind of go with that leaf to kind of highlight and give it a lot more detail. So for that, so say for the, the red leaf, I'm doing the red underneath and then a dark red and an orange to kind of dry brush over top. For the yellow leaf, I'm using a darker yellow and an orange to go over top. And then for the orange leaf, I'm doing a darker orange brownish color and a dark red to go over top. So for all of these, again, I just painted the base and then I also made sure I painted the sides and the tips on the back. And the reason I'm doing the tips on the back is because when I do adhere these to my sign, you're going to be able to see those tips. So I wanted to make sure it looked complete from the back too. If you're new to my channel, you'll know I think the back is just as important as the front because you'll have this beautiful project and turn it over and go, oh, if it's for you personally, it's not as important, but I do sell a lot of the products that I make here at my booth or craft fairs. So it's important to me that when they have a piece that they pick up from me that is a completed piece, and there is no surprises around the corner. So that's why I'm doing it. If you don't have a piece of wood you're adhering it to, make sure you have the back painted as well. You don't have to do the dry brush over top, just a solid, nice color to complete it. That way when you attach your string and you still see the back, it's not gonna be yucky, okay? So that's my suggestion to you. But all I'm gonna do is dip my chip brush, so it's like a, a harder bristle brush and it leaves lots of fun textures in both colors and kind of flip it around, get both colors all over the bristles, tap off any of the excess to where it's not gonna leave heavy streaks and just lightly with the tip of the brush, brush that in each direction. Um, so I'm following the leaves and brush that all over the leaves until it's blended and looks the way that I want it to. Um, I went pretty heavy on this. I want that background color to kind of um, show through, but with those other colors kind of taking over just to give it a lot of dimension, a lot of color, because most of the fall leaves that you see aren't one solid color. I did this with the acorn as well with the same idea in mind. I did a brown base for it and then I used a darker brown to kind of brush and give it those um, details and like the curves of the acorn. And then for the top, I took that same brown, kind of um, put it on a 
a harder like a stencil brush with those same hard bristles and I just kind of stippled it all over the top to give it that fun texture that you see at the top of an acorn. Then I painted that sign that I picked up from the Target dollar spot. Um, it just says welcome on the front is very simple but I wanted to give it a nice dark solid color so I'm going to be using a dark gray chalk paint giving it one solid coat and then from there, after everything is dry, I'm going to seal everything with my polycrylic. Now, polycrylic is not um, waterproof, but it is water resistant. So the reason I'm doing this is because I am making this with the intent of it being used behind a screen door or under a covered porch. However, I like to tag everything. So when I put this into my booth, it will say the tag, the price, whatever, and then the suggested um, indoor covered porch only. People don't always take what I'm trying to tell them um, and they will just put it wherever they want and then be upset that it doesn't hold up to the way they want it to. So this is my attempt at making sure that it's going to hold up and last as long as possible. So I went ahead and took polycrylic and I did the front and the backs of the leaves and the acorn. That way, even when they're attached to the sign, if water runs behind them, they are protected because this really soft wood and the MDF board of the sign are just going to absorb that water and cause problems. So I did the front and the back of each leaf and acorn and around the edges. And I did the same, the front, the back, and all of the edges of that sign that I picked up from the dollar target spot. From there, I'm going to be using um, some E6000 and hot glue to attach these to the signs. Now, I wanted to make sure I knew my layout before I did this, and I do want to put the word, um, the word fall down the front. So I just laid it out how I wanted. I didn't want all the leaves facing the same way or anything because leaves don't fall symmetrical in order. So we don't want that. We want to turn them in topsy-turvy and make them all kind of fit like a puzzle. So after I kind of got my placement and I like how they kind of fall over the board, you know, it's not all just in place. And then I also was keeping in mind that I wanted my letters to line up in the center. Now with all the leaves and different, you know, angles and stuff, I want to make sure those letters would be able to actually line up. So that took some, some brain process. And the way I'm going to add my letters is you can pick up poster board. If you have a Cricut, or sorry, the poster board letters, like the stickers, you can use your Cricut if you have a Cricut. You can use sticker paper and print directly on that and cut those out and put those on there. There are so many options if you don't have a Cricut to cut vinyl or anything. And this is the most simple one that I can give you. And that is to size your letters to the way they want print them out on regular computer paper, and then use a piece of carbon paper to trace those letters on, and then you can paint or use a paint pen or something to go ahead and paint those letters on. Now, before I do that, again, I wanna go ahead and attach these so that I know that they're gonna be exactly how I want them so that what I can get my letters lined up. I'm doing this the letters at the end because what I don't want to happen is for me to think I have it, put the letters on the leaves and the acorn, and then go to put them on the board and realize I messed up and now the orientation's off or it doesn't look quite right. So again, I'm using E6000 and I'm being very aggressive with this because I don't want these to go anywhere. So mine, I cannot get open from the cap, so I had to cut the bottom a little bit and I'm just squeezing that all over the center and then I'm just dousing it with hot, hot glue. Now the reason I'm doing both is because the hot glue is gonna set immediately so that I can go ahead and work and the E6000 is gonna set and give it more of a long hold. So I'm just doing that and as I'm going, because it is like a soft wood, um, it's slightly, I wouldn't say bent, but um, a slightly warped. So I'm just using some heavy paint cans and stuff to keep that in place so I can move on to the next one while it's drying and make sure that that gets really secured to the board. After I get them all in place, I'm again, I'm gonna take the words that I um, took off of my computer. I just typed it out. No, I didn't misspell the word fall. I just didn't wanna have to print a second page for a fourth letter that is a repeat letter as a waste of resources and I'm not going to do that so I just put out the letters that I needed and um, kind of sized them on my computer I did print two different sizes because I wasn't sure what would actually look good once I got it back into my craft room I picked which one worked best um, if you're curious about this font it's called a as in the letter a calling and I'm pretty sure I got this off of defont.com if you don't know about that it's a website where you can get free fonts for your personal use and they have thousands so you can spend some time there but this is one of my favorite fonts that I have um yeah I don't know I use it all the time 
So I'm just going to, again, cut them, those letters down, tape them in place where, where they're needed, lift it, put that carbon paper, the dark side down, use a pencil and just trace those letters. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna transfer that letter on there for me so I know where to paint. So again, you can use markers, you can use paint, you can use paint pens, whatever you have on hand and color in those letters. I did this for all four of them and then I'm gonna use that same gray from the background and I'm going to paint them in. Now, this is kind of dark on dark for some of these and I wanna make them pop, so I'm just gonna use some white acrylic paint and I'm going to trace each of these letters. If you don't have a steady hand, it might be easier for you to use a paint pen. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, um, my tip for you is to use a small detailed brush, which means it just has a really thin um, bris like tip for the bristles. Let me just show you the one I used. If you can see this, it's nice and thin. And now, um, I, I do paint all the time, um, so this is kind of second nature to me and I don't have to think about it, but sometimes I forget. Not everybody has been exposed to this. So what you wanna do is make sure you're just using the tip. So I literally put paint on the tip and you're just barely touching the surface. Like you're almost just touching the paint to the surface and letting it roll off of the bristles. So uh, don't smash your bristles down. Don't push your bristles down. Let them float across the page, okay? So just the tip of the brush, and that's how you get those fine lines that you see other people doing, and just go nice and steady, and even if you have to do it a little bit at a time, that is fine. Go at your own speed, but that's my little tip for you if you're looking for fine lines to do when you're brushing, is remember that the paintbrush is all about the tip of the brush, and the bristles, it had all of this right here, it doesn't matter, it's just attached, okay? So I hope that's helpful for you. And so just keep that in mind whenever you're painting, the, the point is the tip of those bristles is what you're using. And then if you push harder, you're gonna get a thicker line. If you keep just to the tip of the brush, it'll be thinner. So if you're, you're going and it's too thin and you don't like it, then just sl push slightly harder. And if you're not sure what you're looking for, use a piece of paper and practice your lines to kind of see what pressure you need. After you trace those, I am going to make a little ribbon bow using some of the same ribbon from before um, for the garland that we made, and then also a few others that I have on hand. Again, I have a hoard of ribbon, guys, way more than I need to have, but I like to make sure that I have it whenever I need it. So I'm just gonna pick through my hoard, half of it's from Dollar Tree, half of it's from who knows where else. Like I said, I like to buy it on sale. And I'm gonna do the same thing as before, match that same length. If it has wire, I'm gonna cut it off. Some of them I'm gonna cut in half. Um, just kind of get different widths for them so that they have um, just different textures going on and things to make it very interesting. I'm gonna kind of lay them out, crossing them here and there. Use some Dollar Tree of that um, brown jute that they have. Tie it in the middle and I have a really cute bow. I'm going to stick another piece of twine through the back, tie that down, and then I'm gonna tie that to the hanger rope. Now, when I was starting to make this sign, I knew to keep in mind that the two holes at the top, I still needed them and not to cover them. However, when I went to place my leaves, that went out the window, I completely forgot, but thankfully didn't completely cover it, and I can still squeeze some some rope through there. Now I'm not gonna be able to get the same rope that it came with because it's too thick and my leaf is covering it to where I can't get it to pull it through. However, I am thankful to have on hand rope completely similar to that, which is slightly thinner. And I was able to get that through, tie it a knot in the back to secure it for each side. And then I can just take that bow that we made and tie it to there. And we will call this sign done. I think it turned out fantastic, um, but going back to me saying I do plan on selling this, I want to make sure I do waterproof it now that I know everything is pretty sealed and really good taken care of. I'm going to be using my Rust-Oleum 2X clear matte spray paint, which is waterproof, and giving this sign two coats on the front, back, and sides to make sure it is sealed up in case it is exposed to the weather at any opportunity. So. Um, let me know what you think about this sign below. I think it turned out really well. And honestly, guys, I think this costs about $10. So very happy with this sign, how it turned out. And I would love to hear from you on what you think about it in the comments below. The last little project that I have for you is 
super quick and super easy and it's these cute little tags that I picked up from the Target dollar spot. Now, I'm gonna show you right now. Look at the quality of these. She's a thick mama, we like this, okay? This was a dollar, so not only is it cheaper than at the Dollar Tree, granted it's a dollar for one when you get a pack of a couple there, but this is a really good quality, guys, and it comes with a little beaded string already. I think this is absolutely worth it. So I picked up two of them, and I'm just going to be using some Dollar Tree transfers to give these a little makeover. I'm actually not going to touch the back of it. It's simple. It's cute. I like it the way it is. That way people can have a choice of either side, and I don't have to paint anything. So I'm just going to pick up um, or choose out of the ones that I have already picked up from the Dollar Tree from the transfers, cut out the ones I want and put them on. Now, if you've never used their transfers before, you're just going to be um, cutting out what you want, peeling it away from the back, placing it down, and then rubbing it with a, either a credit card, a flat, so I'm using a popsicle stick, the back of a you know, a brush, a plastic ruler, whatever. You're basically, your fingernail, <laughs> want to rub on there and you're going to slowly peel back and you'll see that it will stick. If there's any parts that aren't sticking, lay it flat again, rub it in that area that should come off and then you're just going to peel that plastic away and you're going to have it on there. I like to then tap my finger across it to make sure everything's stuck down and it's literally that simple. So what I'm doing with the, um, First one, I'm going to do the Celebrate Family, Friends, and Laughter um, ones from the transfers. And then I'm going to just put those on there. I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. That way I don't run out of space. And then I'm just going to use a Sharpie to fill in where I need. So we need some punctuations for this. Um, some commas, the and sign. I don't really like the and sign I drew on there, but we're going to get over that. It's fine. I drew a little heart, and then I'm just going to take that Sharpie and rub it around the edges just to kind of um, pop it out, make it look a little distressed. And that is it for that one. For the second one, I'm going to be using the <clears throat> Forever Thankful black wording and then two of the golden... Uh, like little greeneries that I have from another set. And same thing, I'm just going to start with my edges so I know I won't run out of space and that my spacing is there by putting on those gold foiled leaves. Um, again, just lay it down, rub it pretty vigorously, um, especially with the foiled ones, they don't stick near as well. But pull those away and then I'm gonna put down my Forever Thankful. I'm going to also be using my gold paint pen that I have, it's a Krylon gold leaf pen. These paint pens are amazing. Um, I will say it's not showing up great in this video, so maybe don't judge it off of this one because mine is been put to use. So it's kind of drying out a bit. I do need to order new, but if you want a pure gold, beautiful paint pen, I have it in gold, rose gold, and silver, and they are my absolute favorite. They're a little pricey, but I do have them linked in my affiliate links below because they are next level. They give you beautiful, beautiful, um projects and I couldn't say enough about them. I'm not sponsored by them at all. I just love their paint pens. So I digress. I did the same thing. I put all of the transfers down, took that and put it around the edges. And then I kind of wanted the beads at the top to kind of um, tie in. So I did two. So I did every other. And I just kind of roughly brushed on the gold from the paint pen, letting some of that black still show through so it didn't have to be solid and called it quits on this one as well. I think they turned out super cute with minimal effort and sometimes that's what we need guys. So let me know which one of these is your favorite and let me know what project overall is your favorite. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really, really appreciate you being here. Give me a thumbs up if you like this content and if you think you did a good job on these projects. I would love to know if you're going to try them out. If you do get inspired enough to do any of them, please join my Facebook group. It's it's small and it's growing, but I'm just starting out with it. And I just wanted to have a space where everyone can share their projects with me, whether it's inspired by me or your other favorite YouTubers. And I love to see it because that inspires me and I know it inspires others to be creative. And that's the entire point. So that is linked in the description as well. Go check it out. We would love to see you there. If you're new, consider subscribing to my channel. We would love to have you join us on our crafting journey. If you're returning, thank you so much. I love that you're continuing to support me and be here for me. I'm going to take you guys in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.